Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasman, and today we are looking at Home Links 2.9, Solving Multiplicative Comparison Number Stories, which is basically a fancy way of saying, hey, we're going to multiply to solve some story problems. So let's take a look at the instructions for uh, number one. It says, make a diagram or drawing and write an equation to represent the situation, then find the answer. Well, the situation for problem number one is Judith collected nine marbles. Swen has six times as many. How many marbles does Swen have? Now, I'll be honest with you. This space that they've provided you here, it's not a lot of room for a diagram or a drawing. But you know, in your uh, uh, home links workbooks, you have the back pages of each of the home links, and they're blank, which allows you lots of space for some scratch work. So we're just going to imitate that here. So Judith has nine marbles. Swen has six times as many. So basically a diagram could be an array. Okay, so Judith has nine marbles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Swen has six times as many. So that means I'm going to make six rows of nine marbles. And that's going to show me the size of Swen's marble uh, collection compared to Judith, who sounds like is just starting out or is not very good about collecting. So when I look at this array that I'm hastily generating right here for you, the blue row represents Judith's amount compared to Swen's amount, which is the entirety of this array here, six rows with nine in each row. Well, the equation, obviously, would be nine times six equals, we'll say, m for marbles. The unknown is just basically a placeholder until we find the answer. This is a little bit of algebra for you. So what is nine times six? Well, if you didn't know it off the top of your head, you could consult a multiplication division uh, times table, and you would learn that nine times six is 54. So there is your answer. Swen has 54 marbles, and we used a diagram or an array to show it, okay? So that's really what we're doing here is we're reading, uh, using a little bit of reading comprehension as we go and trying to figure out what the author of these number story problems wants us to do, okay? Number three is an interesting one because unlike the first problem where we're just missing one uh, of the uh, numbers, we don't have any numbers in this problem at all. Matter of fact, it asks you insert quantities into the number story. So they're basically saying fill in the blank, give it some numbers, then try out the problem that you just created. Lola picked blank apples. Eileen picked blank apples. Eileen picked blank times as many apples as Lola. Okay, so an example of this would be, let's say Lola picked, oh, let's make it interesting, we'll say 12. Eileen picked blank apples. Eileen picked blank times as many apples as Lola. Let's say she picked three times. So now our missing number is the amount of apples that Eileen picked, but we know that Eileen picked three times as many as Lola. So 12 times three equals something. A for apples. Okay? So you might be thinking, wait, I don't know how to multiply by 12 yet. Well, there's two approaches we can take. One is uh, with the knowledge that multiplication is just repeated addition. I can just add three groups of 12 together to get my answer. 12 plus 12 plus 12. And that would give me 36. Or I could break this problem down and know that 12 times 3 is the same as saying 10 times 3 and 2 times 3 added together. That's a little uh, preview into partial products right there. So with that, we have our answer to our invented problem. It's 36 apples. 
Now, if we changed the variables of one of these numbers, uh, then we would change the nature of this problem. So, for example, let's say instead of 12 apples, we make it 15 apples. So if we change 12 to 15, then our answer would no longer be 36. We would have a much different problem on our hands. So 15 times 3 equals A. So we would approach it the same way. I could add 15 to itself three times, like so. Or I can use the partial products strategy of 15 times 3, which is basically saying 10 times 3 and 5 times 3. Well, I know anything times 10 is going to be that number with a 0 behind it. 10 times 3 is 30. And then 5 times 3, that's 15. So 30 plus 15 is going to give me 45. So if I change the number of apples that Lola picked, and if Eileen picked 3 times as many, my answer is now 45. Okay, So those quantities are variables, and when you change the variables, you change the outcome. And that's about it, friends. Uh, I want you to try creating your own problem using a number other than 12 or 15. Okay, finally, we have some practice problems down at the bottom. Write these numbers in expanded form. Expanded is just a fancy way of saying break it down by place value. So let's do number one, or the, the first one, which is actually number four uh, in expanded form. 3,830. 3,830. By just saying the numbers aloud, you've broken it down into expanded form. 3,830. That's all I did, is I just took apart the number, 3,830, into its place values. 3,000 plus 800 plus 30 would give me 3,830. If I write this off to the side, okay, like so, 3,800, three tens, that's what 30 is, gives us that number. So that's all I'm doing. I'm breaking apart the number into its individual place values and showing the place value holders zeros behind each number. So 3,000 is 3 with three zeros behind it. If you have questions about any of these problems, about expanded form, about multiplicative uh, story problems, or multiplication in general, reach out to your math teacher. They would be happy to help. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks, friends.